couple people reached out to me to talk about a video another YouTuber did on how there was no evidence of what he referred to as meat wave attacks or human wave attacks by Russia in Ukraine. Now, I'm at the Tampa airport right now and about to fly to Long Island for a podcast, but I can probably knock this video out before my flight. So you've noticed I've never once called anything a meat wave attack, and there's a reason for that. It's not a military term. It's more like a shorthand emotional term designed to invoke a specific kind of response. And this particular YouTuber made an interesting case that Russia wasn't using meat wave attacks or human wave attacks. Now, I kind of have a policy that I don't take food out of the mouths of other YouTubers. I believe that there is enough cake for everybody to eat and someone doesn't have to lose in order for me to win. But there's a little bit of nuance to the subject that I want to shed light on. To start, I have to say that now is the third year of the war in Ukraine and things change. What was the case at the start of the war isn't necessarily the case now. A good example is Russia's use of the Battalion Tactical Group, which is a very Russian way of doing things. Russia's army is highly artillery focused and highly mechanized. Why? Because during the Cold War, the Soviets thought they would be operating in a nuclear chemical environment, and soldiers are much better protected from sea burn or chemical, biological, radiological, and nuclear threats when they're in a vehicle. It also allows for a cheaper army. If you're going to have an army that's mostly conscripts with professional educated officers, you can kind of get away with not having mid-level non-commissioned officers in a mechanized army. The whole idea is that you use artillery to just pummel the enemy and then probe until you find a gap and then you send as much Soviet steel through that gap as possible. And if you're mechanized, you really never have to go that far away from your base of fire, which is your infantry fighting vehicle, your BMP. So you really don't need the kind of school intensive and expensive non-commissioned officers who can fire and maneuver independently. So one of Russia's post-Cold War inventions was the Battalion Tactical Group, which took the kind of artillery that's normally found in a brigade and they placed it in the battalion. Now, this was supposed to work in theory, but in practice during Russia's invasion of Ukraine, they just didn't have the logistical lift to get all of the rounds out to all of the individual artillery pieces at the battalion level. So when Russia invaded Ukraine, it had artillery in its battalion tactical groups. Around, I believe, summer of last year, they started removing artillery from battalion tactical groups and started putting them in artillery regiments that were just easier to feed logistically. So if you're talking about how the Russian army fights and you're referencing battalion tactical groups from papers two years ago, you're using knowledge that is two years old. I asked Stable Diffusion AI to generate me an image of World War II era American Army soldiers with all their gear, and it generated this image. Okay, the, the gun is kind of off, but the helmet is period correct, or is it? I mean, look at this picture from Fort Belvoir, Virginia in May of 1941. Now, technically, this was before the U.S. Army entered the war, but it's al almost a year later they're using a different kind of helmet. The point is that tactics and equipment change during a conflict. So what you think you know might not necessarily be correct a few months from now. Okay, so what does all this have to do with meat wave attacks? Well, the Royal United Services Institute for Defense and Security Studies published a paper last year titled Meat Grinder, Russian Tactics in the Second Year of Its Invasion of Ukraine. And they categorized Russian infantry into four types, disposable, line, assault, and specialized. And I think that's where this term meat wave originated. I think people are still reading the paper, which don't get me wrong, is a good paper, but it may or may not be accurate today. Now, one of the problems faced by both Russia and Ukraine on the front lines is the predominance of ISR, or intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance. Over the past year, Russia has figured out how to use drones like their Orlan 10 to do spotting. And Ukraine is using commercial off-the-shelf drones for spotting. So it's pretty much impossible for an adversary to build up anything more than a company in order to conduct an attack. There's just too much thermal and visual fingerprint that builds up when you put a lot of troops in one place, and that is a recipe for an artillery or rocket strike. So that's why we're seeing Russia launch these strange, unsupported frontal attacks with four vehicles or six vehicles, many of which get destroyed. And I think that people are, who are trying to explain this can do it in one of two ways. They can try to explain the non-permissive environment doesn't allow for a buildup of a decisive number of troops, so then they, they just would rather say meat wave attacks. Now, the meat wave in this case is usually in a can. And I think it's just a shorthand way of explaining this is why Russia is conducting unsupported frontal attacks. Now, this might change. 
With America's Congress in deadlock, artillery aid to Ukraine has slowed to only what Europe can provide. This doesn't mean that Ukraine will necessarily run out of artillery ammunition, but it could mean that batteries will hoard artillery for only the most important fire missions. And when that day comes that Russia can build up a company or battalion level attack because Ukraine just can't service those targets, that's going to be a real problem. So is Russia conducting foot-based human wave attacks like Wagner used to do in Bakhmut? Maybe. I mean, they certainly were at one point, but that might have changed sometime last year. So I think this idea of meat wave attacks is an idea that was popularized by one article and got traction. And it may or may not be true a year later in the current operational environment. Thank you guys so much for watching. Aw oh man, I'm so bored! Christ on crutches with a permanent profile. That's because you have the wrong toys. You need a Ryan Macbeth in action figure from the Knife Hand Company. That's right, Ryan Macbeth in action figures go everywhere. Put them on your desk, your Crocs, your keychain. You can even ask Ryan advice. Ryan, why does daddy ignore me when I'm over his house for the weekend? Because your new mommy is way hotter than your old mommy. Trading cards, you get a free trading card in every box. Now that's Ryan Riffick. So come on down to the Knife Hand Company and get your in-action figure today. Alcoholism, cigarettes, and non-service connected hearing loss sold separately.